Welcome back to The Dish on the heels of a huge carryover, at least by recent standards. Not quite six figures, but a big pot nonetheless at Backwaduck, Belmont at the Big A. And joining me to go over what I I think, we'll see what uh, the Prince says, a very challenging sequence is the Prince himself, David Levitch. Eight, uh, nine races on the pick six card, David, but uh, a lot of eyes will be on the back two thirds of the races with that pick six carryover. And uh, I think it's pretty tough. Yeah, it's very tough. There's two races in here, especially that we'll talk about the main special weight on the grass and then the 25 dirt claimer that looked like you could go all kinds of ways. And we'll talk about um, especially the main special weight on turf where it looks like there's absolutely nobody you can lean on in there. But it's a good sequence. I know they had a 96 to one winner on Sunday that created this pick six carryover, which was I think it was the highest payout in over 20 years or something I saw on Twitter, maybe more than 20 years, might be like 30. Largest so, uh, exact a payout ever, I think they they said for Naira. So yeah, an incredible. Payout. Yeah, so that sparked this carryover, and it looks like a good. Um, hopeful. I don't think the weather looks good. I actually checked the weather a couple of days ago. I think the weather will be fine. So the four turf races should be good to go. All right. Uh, well, the meet did start last week, so we're four days in before we get to the races. Did want to just touch on uh, the standings uh, through the first four days, and uh, I know a couple of these guys were traveling. Uh, it is steak season, Breeders' Cup prep, et cetera. But uh, Manny Franco uh, had a really good first first week, 28% winners, high impact. Uh, no surprise to see the Ortiz brothers right behind him. But uh, did you get the sense Manny was riding well or just on the right horses? No, he was riding well. He had two three, two separate three-win days on some prices as well. No, he's been – he honestly – he started off Saratoga really slow, and then like the last five weeks of Saratoga, he almost got to second place. And I think he was like two for 50 or something after like yeah. two or three weeks. So he's been really riding well the last five weeks of Saratoga up until now. And he's just been a really consistent jockey in New York that rides hard and makes the right decisions. And um, he's going to probably be dominant all winter again. All right, we'll be watching for him. And then on the trainer side, uh, a little more parity, uh, which you would expect uh, three tied with three. Uh, Maker, which I guess surprises this Kentucky guy a little. I mean, I know he, he runs in New York, but certainly shifting to Backwaduct and seeing him on top, three for 11, definitely hot. Uh, and then, you know, much, much more no names behind him. Linda Rice uh, tied for fourth. I guess that would be with two. She looks for a, another meet championship at Naira, but uh, no, no real surprises here other than, I guess, get used to seeing Dutro's name, right? Yeah, and he's been running a – we're going to talk about Dutro in the first leg of the pick six, but he's been running a lot more horses, which makes – I mean, he's already run over, um, as you see on the screen, that many horses in a couple days, and he's running a lot more this week. So it seems like he's one of those trainers that, you know, came back, obviously, from the long suspension that's starting to get a lot more horses – and a lot better horses, too. He had a really nice first-time starter win last week at um, Belmont at the Big A that was pretty good. So, um, yeah, he's looks like he's got a barn full of horses, it seems now. And that uh, Dutro first-time starter was five stars on the HRN debut ratings, uh, which we'll get more on when we get to the maiden race in the sequence. Uh, but as you noted, uh, Dutro has the second choice on the morning line. Uh, I actually would... I think it will end up being my top pick. I haven't dug in probably as deeply as you, but number four, Duke of Hazard certainly fits for me at least uh, in this uh, one mile turf race uh, to start things off. But there are no gimmies in this sequence and this race included. No, I think you have to talk about the two horse in here, Kuramata first, because he's a horse that I think shorter might be better for him. So the mile, if you forgive him for his last effort, which was absolutely terrible considering <laughs> how good his trip was. Um, and then two back, he kind of hung on the money against Jerry the Nipper, who's a really good New York bred horse for Rapoli. So he's faced good company, but I wouldn't to take too short of a price on him. He definitely would be an eight horse on the cut back to a mile. Um, the other thing to talk about in this race is the projected speed. I'm guessing the 1A midday image has to come out because he's entered um, at a later date. He takes a little speed out of the party. But the six horse win from within with a bug girl and call me Harry are dead speeds. So as long as both of them run, I think the pace will be hot. Now, obviously, we can't predict the scratches this early. But if one of those came out, one of those would be lone speed. So that's something to in, um, watch with the six and the seven. But I'm with you in this race. I like Duke of Hazard. His win was very good off the claim for Dutcher. He had a good he had a good trip, but I don't know why he can't get another one. He looks like he's a horse that um, really likes the mile distance. He ran a 95 buyer. If he can run back to that race, 
I don't see why he can't beat Kiramata. Um, and like I said, if the six or seven do scratch, I think you would have to use the one that runs just based on the pace. But if they both run, I wouldn't use either. And I think it could set up for Duke of Hazard. And I don't know how they're going to bet this race. Do you think Chad Brown's just going to be the favorite by default? Yeah. I mean, especially Pratt. So you get the, you know, jockey money, whatever there is left of that with all the computers. Although the, the wind pool is different than the other pools at Naira. Uh, because of how they treat costs. So, uh, you know, really to me that three minute to two minute flash could give some clues, maybe the exact pool as well in terms of, you know, where the money is going. But I have to think Karamata is going to be the favorite here just with the connections and super consistent. And the pace is interesting depending on who's in or out, because I do think there's a possibility Karamata is in a better spot to get the jump, so to speak and have Duke of, ha- Duke of Hazard uh, doing more work late. Uh, but certainly the scenario you described, if there is pace in there, totally sets it up for the four. Yeah, I would just use the two and four in here in the pick six. And if, like I said a couple of times, if for some reason the six or the seven come out and only one of them is left in, I guess if you want to use another horse, you'd probably have to use the speed in here, assuming midday image. He has to come out. I'm pretty sure that's the rule in New York if he's entered in a race at a later date. So he has to come out. Um, so I would just use the two and four in here. There you go. Uh, Well, things don't uh, get any easier by any means in race five. Made in special weight uh, that drew 12 uh, for the outer turf, sprinting six furlongs. And uh, before we get to those who have run, did want to note that uh, we do have uh, number four, You Only Live Once, is a four star uh, on our debut rating. Six to one morning line, Pletcher Ortiz. Have to think if this one's well met, given those connections, six to one is a dream. Uh, but I will say the four stars do outrun the rods and uh, immediately seeing that, it's a must use for me. Yeah, Pletcher is not known for his turf sprinters in debut. And it's also hard to tell with this one. Obviously, the pedigrees there cost 475000 but she's only worked at Belmont on the dirt. She's not one of those horses that shipped up to Saratoga to work on the turf, but she didn't start working until August 6th. So, it's a really tough read. I think this is one of those races that you wish was the first leg of a pick six so you could see the board. <laughs> I guess you can look at the double projection Doubles, maybe. Yeah. But, but that being said, I think this is a horse that – it's a tough read, and if you're spreading, you obviously have to use Pletcher and Irad with a horse like this. And it doesn't even look like they matter that they didn't work her on the um, turf. It looks like she was always going to the turf regardless. So, yeah, she's definitely a horse I would use if you're spreading. And of those who have run, uh, I see numbers three and seven is standing out based on what they've accomplished on paper. Uh, They're they're tough to separate. Number seven, Oolong High, is the higher price of the two. So my thought, kind of thinking if I'm using a a six to one first or an Oolong High, I'm right there with Material Witness, that maybe Material Witness is the one to fade at seven to two. Uh, Any up-and-comers potentially that could – improve beyond what we've seen so far on paper well i'm with you on that i like oolong high better than the three horse i never know what to do with these horses from kentucky downs that was their only (laughs) turf race and that's such an such an odd track you don't know if the track just carried her along and she handled it the diatris barn has been we don't have the numbers but they've been absolutely ice cold since basically since the maybe even before the belmont i mean i don't even remember them doing very well at belmont so they've been super super cold for the most part so she's a horse that I, I guess she would be a B if you were going to do the ABC method. I like Oolong High as the speed in here, so I'd definitely use her. I think the six-horse Queen of the Mud is interesting. She didn't run super fast on debut, but Grand Motion is really good second time out, and she's going to mm-hmm. be a price. And I've kind of seen enough of the horses that have run for them. A lot have had a lot of chances. So I would take a horse like that who could jump up. I mean, if she jumps up 10 to 12 buyer points, she could easily win this race based on what the other horses have run. I also thought the nine horse Isola was interesting. She was super, super rank in her U.S. debut. She was bet like no to no avail down the like two to one in a deep yeah. field. And she was just super ranked the whole time. So when I see a super rank horse that wants to go, I kind of like a cut back to six furlongs with a good outside post. And – If you know who she's owned by, I have to use this horse because she's owned by a a good basketball coach. Um, So we're going to throw her in A good one or a great one? A great one. The good part was sarcastic. (laughs) Uh, And for those, I'm not big into uh, international pedigrees. I usually do have to look stuff up. But I will say Kodiak is a name that sticks out to me as 
probably better, especially in terms of international influence, which we think, you know, Dubawi, Galileo, they can run forever. Kodiak to me, definitely middle slash sprinter type. So the cutback doesn't make sense. And it's tough to ignore that this horse was absolutely hammered in the hammered. to be five to eleven two. horse field. Yeah. So uh no, that that's a good look for sure. I would use her. I mean, if I was if you were gonna really spread in here, I'd use one, three, four, six, seven, nine. I'd use as many as you can in this race. I think this is the toughest race. We didn't talk about the one horse, Matta Cat's arrow who's switching to Weaver from Pletcher. I don't know how I feel about going from a Pletcher to Weaver. I guess Weaver's a good – Weaver has been hot the whole summer. He's been dynamite with two-year-olds. So, I don't know. I guess that horse might like a cutback as well. So, that's another horse you could throw in there too. But I think this is probably the toughest leg of the whole sequence. No. Yeah, I mean, just uh, with, with so many and be maidens, lightly raced, uh, a lot of different directions to go. But uh, I know for sure that uh, the first timer with the four stars is definitely going to be on my ticket. Uh, moving ahead, uh, halfway home after this one. Hopefully, we'll be halfway home on our tickets. What is this? Uh, a mile on the, the main track, claiming twenty five thousand. Uh, another another competitive race. Uh, you know, I like to look at uh, just you know the speed figures, obviously, but prime power from Brisnet, uh, all those things. You know, to me. Not so much as, oh, tell me who's going to win, who has the highest number. But just looking at how compact uh, the ratings are uh, can tell you how competitive the race is. And, and it's really hard to separate the top half of this field. Yeah, I think the race starts at the four or six percent is if you trust him or not. He hasn't run in a few months. He's coming off a layoff and he's dropping. So I don't know if this is like a uh, – it's hard. To, it's just hard to gauge if this is a drop to win. He was pretty competitive in non-two New York breads, so he could have easily run in a um, 45 um, tag against New York breads and got the purse there to maybe there's not a race. So I obviously didn't look at the condition book. But he's the horse to beat if he runs his best race. He's just hard to trust. I like the three-horse Salto de Tigre for David Jacobson, who's been doing really well as of late. He's, he's consistent. Best distance is a mile. He's already run 12 times this year with six seconds and two wins. So he's always right there. And the more I looked at this race, I just took a stand with the three and four. You could use so many horses in this race. Um, I guess the 1A, 235 could be four. That's another horse. But the more I looked, I think if 6% is ready to go, he'll win probably. But for insurance, I would probably take the three at a better price to win and use in my pick six in this race. No, I like the stand. Uh, you know, we we all know you can't, you can't spread every race. Uh, yeah. And for me, I I actually greatly prefer taking a stand in a race. A lot might be spreading, and we sort of already use that bucket anyway in in race five because uh, that's probably a spread race for a lot. Um, so to me, I, I like the stand here for sure. Right, a mile in number seven, uh, three to go. Hopefully, there'll be three to go on our tickets to uh, cash. Uh, and it's a turf race and Chad Brown, a heavy hand here on the inside, exact estimate, third choice at four to one. And then almost all the way to the outside is the morning line favorite. Number eight, Francis Francesco Clemente was one to five in one of his races in Europe. Now comes in here with an eight to five morning line. No cinch though. I don't think. No, I don't think he's a cinch. And he also has had problems breaking Europe. And if you look at his races, he's been strictly running at basically a mile and a quarter and I'm, I have no clue on this guess, but I feel like this horse is super talented and this could be a prep for the Long Island, which is it's usually the, I think New York's mixed their schedule around for turf races this year because they're running them earlier. So I think it's middle right. of November, but I, I don't know that for a fact, but this looks like a horse that could be prepping for that race going longer. And he's not a horse that breaks well. Now he does have an eight to five on the line. So he's must be, he must be working super well or have good workout reports. So he's definitely a horse I would use, but. I don't fully trust him to win this race at um, probably the shorter than eight to five. I kind of like the four horse Daunt in here. He's super consistent, 90 mm -hmm. buyer horse every time, ran in the Bowling Green and the Sword Dancer. He gets some class relief here. And I just think he's a horse that you can trust to run a good race. And if it's not good enough to beat the eight horse, it's just not good enough. But I wouldn't lose to him. Um, he's not a win machine, but. What's it. the deal with the, the, the Freedom Trail and the scratches? Because it looked like it was finally going. Now, it wasn't winning, but the numbers improved in both the Pennine Ridge and the Kent. Uh, and then they entered him in a couple stakes. Uh, any insight there? 
No, I don't have insight there, but I know I saw that. And the other thing is he steadily worked. So I don't think it was an injury. He worked the 20th to 27th, September 3rd, September 10th, and September 16th. So I just think they were waiting for better spots and just they kept entering to see who was going and going. And then um, I guess they landed here. He is a good horse, but he's a three-year-old face and older, and he's never yeah. run near as fast as them. But he's a horse that – I mean, I wouldn't – I would use him as a B or a C maybe if that's your method, but – He's going to have to run a career race, but I wouldn't worry about the scratches just knowing that he's been working steadily. I guess they were just scratching and seeing who was in races. Right. He does, he does get some weight as a three-year-old, but uh, it, it is a tall order and going nine furlongs. Uh, maybe a bit of a challenge. Uh, the penultimate race of the sequence, it does end the Grand Slam uh, for those who like to play that. Uh, but for those in the pick six, you'll be looking to get two more home at six furlongs on the dirt. Uh, I guess quasi feature, uh, although the previous race is worth a little more, uh, but sprinters are always fun. And, you know, for me, looking at races the way I do, if I had a single, it would probably be here just because Perfect Munnings does stand tallest on uh, all the, the speed stuff I looked at, but haven't really dug in on pace dynamics or anything like that. So maybe could be wrong. Maybe you'll say, no, you're right. He's the one. Uh, curious your take because this this could be the the flag for a lot of people. I don't want to say no. You're right, but I think you're right. I think <laughs> perfect. I think this was a great claim. He looked like a dead cinch when he ran at Saratoga, and he won by 14 lengths with a strong buyer figure. I don't know why he was in for so low of a price. I don't know if the owners just wanted to win or whatever it was. Linda Rice was trying to win the training title, whatever it was. But it looks like a really good claim by Steve Asmus, and he immediately bumps him back into a condition he's already cleared, but for 45, considering he claimed him for 25. I mean, if he runs his last race, he's just going to beat these horses. Um, There's right. speed that should well, be sitting in front of him. I mean, that I last don't... race wasn't even his fastest. Like, he, he has no. races to run back to that are better. And it's it's incredible to look at this line because, okay, was nowhere in a couple stakes, then for 45 wins. Then again, straight allowance types, nothing. 45 wins, two losses and stakes, and then the 25, which was a huge drop. Probably can't even believe he was – I mean, he should have been two to five in that race. I know, and he won like a two to five shot. And yeah. Everybody was wondering before the race. I remember everybody was like, why is he in this race? He is it, This is a horse that's going to win by the length of the stretch or not hit the board. He won by the length of the stretch. Um, and Jose I, keeps the mount, which, you know, to me, that clearly was a phone call. Yeah, 100%. And the other thing is about this race, a lot of his main competition are three-year-olds. Radio Red, um, Marichachi, who's coming off a nine furlong race, the four horse that wanted no part of going nine furlong. So I just tossed that in general. I can't There's gonna get be... away with that. What'd you say? <laughs> Marichachi? No, that's not what I said. Oh, okay. What I said. Wait, I was reading off my um, Mariachi. There we go. No, no, I was reading off my screen low key. So <laughs> I if know. I did say it wrong, I apologize. <laughs> I can read though. I swear to everybody. I, I do the same I thing. Um, so yeah, no, that's their three year olds. I think Big Engine and Brew Pub are the other horses in here as older four year olds that have run good races and Mike Makers. I I always get scared of Mike Maker and Mike Dove <laughs> together. They just I feel like their horses always just run well. He's the eight horse in here. But if you're gonna key in a race, I think this is the single in my opinion. You obviously obviously could single the chat in the race before, but I just think Perfect Money's is the best horse in here on his best day. All right, and this is the lone uh, sprint in the rate uh, in the sequence. So we we did have uh, last week there were fourteen dirt sprints. Definitely very tough to uh, close. Admitted short, sa small sample size with just 14 races, but that's pretty clear that uh, you want to at least be somewhat forwardly placed. And, uh, you know, against this group especially, uh, Perfect Munnings probably doesn't need to go gate to wire, but certainly could and won't be far off regardless. So no concerns the way the track is playing either, uh, which is always a positive. All right, this brings us home. Hopefully, uh We'll be live, which is always a good feeling. Uh, a couple AEs, MTOs, I would expect to come out uh, on the outer turf. And, and this feels like a throwback, David, a maiden claimer full field turf race to close the card. Uh, we were so used to these uh, over the years in California and Aqueduct, and, and we get one here, a real throwback. And, ooh, I mean, this is one you'd, you'd probably like to be alive to a bunch, but uh, at the same time, can't use them all. 
No, I think this race goes to the nine horse for Joe Sharp, who is two for four at the meet. So he's been pretty live. This is yeah. first off to claim. Now he is claiming the horse from Linda Rice, who, as we know, has been absolutely guns blazing for about the last, um, I don't know, the last 14 years, it feels like at this point. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the race. I think it goes through him. If you trust him, he is kind of pace dependent. But I think if you're playing a big ticket, you obviously spread in this race. But if you want to really slim it down, I think he's 100 percent the horse to beat. I just don't – I don't really know what anybody else has really done in here running-wise. Um, I guess the Linda Rice horse, the seven, um, gets back on the turf. His debut on turf was okay. Then he got rained off twice at Saratoga. So, I don't know. I, I think the nine's way the horse to beat in here. And then Miles, the 11 horse, is another horse for Christoph Kaman, who's getting back on the turf. What, what about Fast Study, who actually was able to make the lead in the stretch uh, in a turf race? 10 to 1 kind of caught my eye. It was one of those like, well, you want my honest opinion? He's 50. I, he was 55 to 1 in that race. Now, granted, I don't know what happened in the race before. I don't love the jockey, and I'm not trying to be hard on the jockey, but the horse was 55 to 1 that day. Right. And if you looked up Miracle Mike's program, you would notice that that's a Pletcher horse that never wins. And that race just it dead fell apart. It just, the whole race just collapsed, and he was Got a it. part of a collapsing pace. But I guess if you want to spread in a race, he's a horseshoe. But I don't like horses that were with the grain of a race, like falling apart like that. And if you looked up Miracle Mike, you'd be like, oh. No, that, that, I mean, that's why I brought it up. I don't watch uh, really any, any races like that since I'm such a, a numbers guy. So that's great. And the three, yeah, and the three horse screw loose is seven and two on the line. I don't like horses that have never tried. I mean, he's had four starts and they never even tried to run him this far. And now it's just like, all right, what do we do with him? Let's just run him this far. So I don't know. He's a horse that if you think he can get the distance, I would you can use him, but I I wouldn't use him, especially at a short price. The marketing well, barn did have the, a big the price. Just seems impossible based on that. Yeah, I don't think he'll be the favorite, but I guess he has those good races sprinting. So people were going to try to try something new for the first time. But we didn't mention the ten horse impassable prince. He ran an okay race two back. Um, at Belmont tossed his side. There's a lot of horses in this race that got rained off at Saratoga. Did it rain a lot at Saratoga this year? Uh, I heard that they had a lot more uh, off the turf races than the previous year. Yeah, and I heard that they blamed Handwell on the off the turf races. So I don't. I'm going to go ahead and say that they did have a lot of off the turf races, jokingly. And then the 12 horse Atlanta is Acuna, who has a terrible post, but will be forward. So, all right. Well, that's the sequence. Now to actually get your numbers, I am assuming you're going to have a ticket in the product. Yep. I'm going to so post you got it your in thoughts. A We're not going to give away the store, though. If you want the ticket, you got to go to picks.horseracingnation.com. Not only Backwaduck, but also Churchill Downs. Backwaduck. Uh, any quick thoughts on Churchill? No, they're – well, I've looked at their cards for the weekend. Their cards are exceptional. On, so their, their night racing card is very good. And, they, I mean, they have just full fields. I mean, their Thursday card, I think it's the day that they got, like, two main specials with 12 horses in each race. So – you know, it's a lot of good young two-year-old um, racing. And then you got the Pennsylvania Derby this weekend. And I will take any bets on Saudi Crown being the favorite over Reincarnate, who's three to one on the line somehow <laughs> compared to Saudi Crown at seven to two. So I yeah, wish we Saudi could get Crown 50. Would be the favorite, right? If Saudi Crown's not eight to five, I would be surprised. He looks eight to five on paper, too. He lost to right. Forte by a nose. What would Forte be in this race? Three to five. Three to five, and they prep for this. I just thought it was a inter it's a good betting race if you don't like reincarnate, in my opinion, because I don't think it'll hit the board. But Baffert's wow, obviously all right. But bonus thoughts: uh, you gonna have anything in the Saturday products from Parks? Parks Saturday, Churchill Saturday, Bob wow. Saturday. It's, right. it's fall racing. It's the best time of the year for racing. I know people like summer racing, but I like fall racing better. Uh, yeah, D day to day, I like fall. I mean, Derby week is great. And yeah, build up in the spring, yeah. but yeah, day to day uh, through November, and then now with the way Turfway is, yeah, a lot of fun. So, all right, well, appreciate the thoughts. Uh, hopefully, it'll turn. Uh, I have to think this pays at least five thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, I think the heavy, most heavy lean will be the seven horse. I mean, the seventh race, the eight horse, the Chad Brown Euro horse. I'm. I feel like people will just lean on that horse by default based on a don't eight horses in a race and it's a euro but yeah i agree with you especially if that horse loses i don't see how it doesn't pay well should pay good all right well that's the paddock prince picks.horseracingnation.com aqueduct churchill uh, throughout the week parks on saturday plenty to tune in for thanks for your time thank you
All right. Join us next week on The Dish, where I think we're going to go over uh, the little brown jug. I'll, I'll be ready. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll be ready. I'll be ready. He's always ready. Good luck, everybody.